Chairman. I'd like to call this meeting of the Ellsworth Planning Board to order. June 6, 2018, 7 p.m. Would the board please introduce ourselves? Blake Howard. John DeLeo. Darrell Wilson. John Fink. Roger Lassard. Jim Barkhouse. Thank you. Uh, first, uh, next item of business is adoption of the minutes from the May meeting. Is there a motion regarding the minutes? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we adopt the minutes as written. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any uh, discussion or corrections to the minutes? Yes. In that case, all in favor, please. Thank you. I guess I'm not voting. Well, actually, tonight. Yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Still voting. What's up with that, anyway? <laughs> okay. Oh my God. I'll let you. I'll let you. <laughs> the next item of business is a sketch plan for a major conditional. A major use site development and major subdivision entitled Washington Lots for Jonathan Bates. The proposal is for two three story apartment buildings with a total of 24 units. The project is located at 29 Washington Street on two parcels, totaling 0.94 acres, tax map 130, lots 26 and 30 in the downtown zone. Is someone representing the applicant, please? Steve Salisbury. Uh, with John Bates and Tim Broshu from CES Engineering. Um, yes, we've got two buildings going on this site. Um, shown on the site plan, one entrance off Washington Street. The marina is down at the end of Washington Street. We know what street we're on. Um, Go in the entrance and you split left to right to one building or the other. They are identical buildings. And um, John passed you out the, the uh, elevations and uh, what the buildings are going to look like. Three stories, four units per story with the with the canopy at the entrance here, carport type thing, unloading and loading under under cover. Can we have a copy of that? Okay. Um, front and mm -hmm. side elevations are there. There's a perspective of the interior. And John can talk about it a little bit. We have a kitchen here on the left, living space on the right. And the two doors you see there are going into the bedroom. The bathroom's out of sight here on the right. You're kind of standing in the entry looking in the, into the space. You want to talk a little bit about maybe a concept of this whole thing? Well, it, we're, we're, we're an Airbnb friendly facility and we're trying to... We're kind of keeping it at like a super transient style building, allowing people to sublet out and short term leases and that sort of thing. We'll tier price them appropriately. Um, basically, it's set up resort style luxury feel with pillars and raised paneling. And it ends up being the floor plan allowed for two bedroom and one bath with a double vanity. So we're trying to hit the, the young professional transient people that are coming in and out of town and you know, maybe we're shooting for year leases, but we might go shorter than that. So that's basically the whole concept. We're kind of trying to blend the asset classes between luxury hotel and, and apartments. So it's basically the, the game plan. And we had great success on the Bangor Road with doing some short term stuff with fully furnished units. So there's definitely a demand and currently no one has those units here. So we're looking to capitalize on that <laughs> shortage. Is the plan? Uh, excuse me. Are you providing any staff in the buildings? Any staff? Yes. No. No. So we will come to you next month with our traffic, our, our stormwater, all the technical details. Um, Steve, the TRT noted a discrepancy in the 
acreage between the application and what's yes I'll, I'll address that at the next go around make sure that's consistent throughout can you describe the topography um, especially in relation to that other building that's on the left side of the plan and the hatched area is that like a like a, uh, a rock wall retaining hatches riprap. that's in place now so that's already in place this exists from here on over it's just this is a separate lot and the elevation of that area is higher or lower than the, these two buildings so this is lower I was going to look at the <coughs> finished floors so and so the riprap is on the property of the first building Mostly. Mr. Bates also owns that lot. That's the duplex that has on Washington. So we're at 51 here, ground level. Mm -hmm. There's 70 here. Okay. And uh, 80 here, another 10 feet higher. How, how tall are the three story buildings? So the roof height with a four pitch roof is probably going to terminate right around 43 feet. Okay. <coughs> so the, uh, he owns the uh, two story duplex building then? Three story. No, 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 no. The, the little, the one in front of the, the where you're going to build. Oh, the budding property, yeah. yes. You own that property. He does, yes. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah. Apple, yeah. What do you think the challenges are going to be for stormwater? Well, it'll go downhill. There's no question about it. Okay, that's good. That's, <laughs> that, that, that's really predictable. Um, and the areas, the areas open right now, or wooded, or generally wooded. There's an existing driveway. There was a structure up there at one time, a small house. So the road, as we propose it now, reutilizes a existing entrance, which we're going to widen and improve. But generally, it's uh, a wooded property. And the, the two lots together, are they, like, is there some sort of right-of-way to the back property, or they own both properties so that there is no easement? It's, yeah, it's wholly owned. There's no easement. Okay. So Stoneway uh, Housing Associates, they, you're budding to that? They're behind you? The Strawway housing. Straw, it's not yes. Strawway, yes. Strawway does about us. Right. And the furthest building back off the road is almost abreast of the middle build well, this building right here. Strawway has a building generally in this area. And basically if you if you continue down Washington Street you end up in the the uh, harbor. That's park, right. right. Yeah, Harbor Park is yeah. at the end of Washington Street. So the water will be going there. Yeah. Okay. Storm water. What's the city's thought about having sidewalks only on one side of that road? Should we be asking the applicant for an ease, a sidewalk easement for this? Is there a sidewalk on the other side of the road? But there's none on the side that he is located, right? Correct. That we probably would not put two sidewalks on that road. Yeah, not at this time. There's not enough right away on that street to put two sidewalks in. I mean, because I <coughs> remember we were talking to Strawway about the same thing. Would they put a sidewalk? They put a sidewalk. No, in. but there, I think there's a path that comes out from them to Washington. Is there a walking path? Yeah, there? There's a walking path. Yeah. So you would just have to cross the street. Okay, just curious. We can look in the ordinance, but I believe that there's no 
you know, there's like there's no sidewalk on that side because I, you know, there's no intent that I know of of the city to put a <coughs> sidewalk on that side right now. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I, I didn't know if it made sense to put sidewalks on both sides of every street. It, that would be the ultimate, but. Steve, well, some of the quite drastic changes in elevation, is, is this lot going to be kind of leveled out or? I mean, uh, looks yeah, like there's going to be two tiers. I mean, we, we show 10 foot difference between this building, finished floor, and this building, finished floor. So it would be a substantial. This is a retaining wall. You can't see it very well. It's not highlighted, but there's, there's a retaining wall along the edge of the drive here to hold that back. And there's a retaining wall here to allow us to build the elevation up to the level of site for this area. Yeah, okay, that's what I was wondering. That, where you just had your hand, I mean, there's about a, well, a, close to a 30 foot difference between the back right and the front left. That's right, so yes. That'll be filled and leveled in, and yep. that's what the retaining walls are. That's what the retaining walls are for. Okay. So the concept is uh, temporary housing, right? With a, le a year lease or maybe less? Yeah, there's just, there is a huge demand and a major shortage from May to October for mm -hmm. transient people. And I found that in my past experience with what I do. And so we're trying to service that demand, but we're ultimately looking for year leases. And we'll probably- Excuse me, you need to go to a mic. I can't hear you. I'm, I'm gonna get in trouble. Plus we won't be able to do the minutes. Yeah, yeah. Well, ultimately we're looking for year leases, but we've experienced a major demand for short term, you know, six month leases and that sort of thing. I haven't completely uh, figured out exactly how we're going to structure it, but I do want to be able to service that ultimate demand from May to October. That's an extreme shortage. So for all intents and purposes, it's it's apartment housing, it's multifamily housing. Um, but we're going to shorten the length of the average quote unquote year lease that everybody's looking for uh, in the units. And did you say that these units were going to be uh, furnished? Yep, fully furnished, TVs on the wall, free Wi Fi is included, internet and cable. So we're trying to keep it so it's, um, it's transient, but at the same time, it's for people that, you know, are on the go that maybe you're only staying a year, six months, three months possibly. And we haven't decided the logistics yet, but, you know, we want to make it extremely turnkey so people aren't moving stuff in and out all the time up and down the stairs uh, and I found in my experience with furnishing the units there's a major demand for that now and no one does that around here and if you go across the country it's it's very much in demand and so I want to be able to service that that demand here because we seem to have a lot of it So, uh, the city, have we gotten any feedback from any of the abutters, any neighborhood meetings, any concerns like other large-scale, high-density? There was one person who received an abutter's notice uh, who lived over on, I think, at, um, you know, the Dean Street Apartments was kind of on the outer uh, end of that 300-foot mm -hmm. um, distance, and uh, just had some questions about what the project was not so much concerns as just questions and curiosity but I did get one one phone call on it but that was the extent of the uh, you know, inquiries that we got okay as a result of the abutters notices I did receive to a call from an abutter uh, an email indirectly to get a copy of the sign plan they were just curious and I sent them a copy of the sketch site plan but okay. that was it Right. And there's, two, there's probably two more public meetings, right? Correct. I do want to say that um, it's the first time I hear that the units were going to be Airbnb short-term rental style. Um, so, and it doesn't seem to be an issue in the ordinance because uh, the zone allows um, 
bed and breakfast and I believe hotels, so that would be similar in impact. It would, what, what is being proposed would not be a gr greater impact. Mm -hmm. And I also want to say that the stormwater is of great concern. It's very steep. Um, if we're working on certain thing right now, so they to see if, if uh, they can uh, get away without retention, but we're definitely uh, going to uh, be looking at, um, we, we don't want to be flooding anybody, and it's very steep, and it's going down the hill, so they're going to have to be very uh, careful, and they're aware of that. Um, so the idea is to be able to use a conveyance structure uh, if it has enough capacity to take it. So, so is there any city stormwater infrastructure close by? Yeah, there's a, but it, there's a, a, a pipe. Okay. There's a there's a catch the basin bottom, and a pipe. Washington Street uh, or along Washington along Street. Along, along Washington Street. It, if I may, uh, there, there, in the indicated riprap area, at the bottom of that riprap area where it terminates onto Washington Street, is a pretty sizable catch basin. Oh, okay. And that that riprap area is actually done really well in terms of a nice swale to catch any type of flow that hits that area and actually goes directly into that uh, city storm drain. So is that rip right there currently? Yeah. No. Yeah. Did you build that rip right, John? Did yeah. 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 Well, me and, and RF Jordan did, yeah. To keep the uh, two unit safe from yeah. going off? And it's a little deceiving here, but this actually slopes, this building, this, the, the grade comes this way and slopes down towards the riprap to keep everything away from the building. And it catches all the water or any type of runoff and hits this riprap and then terminates down into the storm drain. It actually functions really well. <coughs> so I'm looking at the uh, chart for parking requirements. This, this project would be considered a multifamily? So, I'm going to have to think about that a bit. I'm not sure, but yes, probably it would be one and a half per space. Per if, it, if that were true, that, that would just, this has 36, it would have enough. Yeah, because, you know, even if it was short term rental and it's a two bedroom, I mean, two, you know, they wouldn't have one in two, um, two cars, and some people may only have one car, and that's the idea. So. And he may not have all, if he's doing short term, he may not have all the units rented at the same time. I mean, that's obviously would be your goal, but. So I think that would still be appropriate, but we'll look at that. I was just looking at the chart. Yeah. Oh, how does this fit in? Yeah. Multi yeah. makes sense. We're, it's exactly the type of project we're looking at. It's not an infill project, but it's a project close, you know, on public water and sewer. Mm -hmm. It's in the downtown um, zone. It's close to what we call Main Street. Um, it, what we want to create is density near the core, and that minimizes sprawl and trips and stormwater by creating miles and miles of road. It's exactly what we're looking for. So, I wish it was more long-term rental, but I'm sure he will accommodate whatever the market demands, and and that's going to be good. And does the city know what size storm drains? currently on that side of Washington Street? We do know that that was part of the stormwater study that we did accomplish, but I have not uh, uh, looked into that right now because they're still at sketch plan, but I'm sure that's, that's probably why CS is here, or partly, and CS is definitely gonna, I believe, be tasked with that, and we'd, we're gonna be working with them to make sure it works. So. I mean, I presume that, although it hasn't been built yet, the housing at the top of the street would factor into actually there was a there was a lot less post than pre going to that conveyance structure from that project and that's the the that's one of the credit we're hoping to be able to take advantage of by the fact that there was less water they were setting more, less they were sending less water between pre and post to that um, to that uh, pipe. But their calculations would have what the post flow would be, so CES can figure that in <coughs> to make sure 
this pipe's not going to be overloaded. Yeah, I believe Nancy St. Clair just got in contact with CES this week, uh, maybe today or yesterday, um, to send uh, all the information to CES, the study to CES. Nancy St. Clair is the one that did the study. So. Would it be possible uh, in the stormwater discussions that information from that project be included so we can see what's will be going down that pipe and how much you're adding to it? I got to address it real quick. <laughs> sure. Okay. Um, Yes, as Michelle said, uh, we've already. Could you just identify oh, yourself? Oh, yeah, sorry. I'm Tim Brochu with CES. Thank you. <clears throat> as Michelle indicated, we've already talked, uh, been in contact with the public works people looking at the studies that were done for that housing unit so that uh, when we develop our pre development flow pass, we're going to include all of that information as an upgrade and in inflow into that system and then we'll develop an existing what's happening right now before this is here. And that will tell us exactly what goes into this system, which will probably a summation point will be right here where that catch basin is right there. So we'll be bringing it into that and then we'll be able to look at everything going down through to make sure we don't overload anything. I understand that. I and in the previous project, I understand, you know, the, the post calculations, pre calculations, and I don't know what the timeline is on this, but, you know, sometimes it's an estimation. Uh, and what the actual flow is could be less, could be more than what the housing project estimated. Uh, you know, I just want to make sure we got enough information that. The housing project will be completed enough so we'll have a better, you know, more accurate understanding of what that stormwater flow is to, to Mr. Bates' property. You see what I mean? I, you know, it's it's an estimation at, at, at best right now as to what's going to happen. Correct. And where the time of concentration at one point is also all estimates. I mean, these, correct. But so we want this, this project does not have to do retention. Um, does not have to do quality or quantity, okay, quality is fine, does not have to do quantity if there's no flooding impact. So we just got to make sure that, as you said, it's going to work. So that's their job to convince us staff and con afterwards to convince the planning board that it's going to work. Um, we want to make that project work, but we're also going to make sure that it passes a true face you know, a straight based effort, and it's going to work. So, <clears throat> you mentioned in the TRT something about a site visit. Yeah, are you interested? I'm, I'm interested in a site visit, but I, I have a, I just have this feeling that I'd like to have the application, like more complete, more filled out. Right. I mean, there's right. there's a lot of detail here for a sketch plan. So, would you like to do it between the the preliminary and final? I feel like I would have more like concrete things to to look at. Okay, um, if you tell us design. this, if that's a uh, a wish is a, a wish of the board, it's going to be very helpful because we're going to be able to schedule it so it's going to flow well, I, and I don't see a problem with that at all. I'm I'm interested you, in walking okay. the site and seeing some of these reference points. Okay. Uh, I'd like to see like a traffic impact study or something like that. Is a little rough or something that's okay because you know those two main arteries, High Street and Wall Street, you get more and more traffic coming down to Washington. Just so that we uh, understand that, that in, in terms of uh, planning, this is a low generator. And um, we have, John has requested when he came in to pick up the package. The two previous uh, traffic study for the 208 High Street. So you have those there. Um, I believe that a project of this nature is what seven or eight trips per unit per day. Is that correct? Pretty close. Yeah. Which is de minimis. It's yeah, but if you go there, I mean, I, I went through this before. 
between mm -hmm. the hours of three and five, the traffic's backed up past the Harbor Park. And but the problem is not going to be, the problem is not going to be, the problem is not from that project. No, the but the project is there or not. more traffic, more traffic. So, okay, so if you want, I can explain what we're doing for traffic, John, if this is what we're doing right now, we related to traffic city, to help. Yeah. Yes, I don't know I mean, if that's I, the place or not. I heard the not. city managers talk about that in their previous meeting. We were talking about the new development of Washington Street. That, you know, you're going to change the lights and traffic flow is going to be better. And so we are going to... I wonder if we could put this discussion off till the actual application. I think it's beyond a scope okay. plan at this point. But I'd like to have it when we do our yeah. site visit. And, and I think... Or something, you know, rough. It can be rough, but, you know, it doesn't have to be specific. I think that in the same way John has concerns about the cumulative effect of the stormwater estimations and calculations, I also have that same feeling about the, the projects that we have as far as traffic flow, that they, that we try and roll those together because they are so close to each other and they are so related to each other. I just feel like any calculations that take place have to account for them. Um, I, I did see the study that you provided and when I read that, you know, the traffic counts were 2016 and it references a system planner that was no longer here, I'm like, okay, well, this data is really old. Somebody that does traffic, you have to roll all that together for us. So that's what I was going to talk about, what we're doing with um, timing plans and, and traffic signals. Um, I just also, so we can talk about this later, but I do want to say that an applicant is not responsible for existing deficiencies in a system. So that's one thing we're just, right now so th those two projects don't exist so there is no deficiency those so two projects don't exist but the counts are on the table uh, so and the counts that so are attributed to their project are theirs then. right so these people need to account for those correct but the question i think at hand is does a project that comes to the city regardless of any, the project that comes to the city is it responsible for, it's responsible for the impacts it's gonna create. Is it responsible for all the existing deficiencies that is not their responsibility? And that's the question here. The answer is we can't put our deferred maintenance and our problems on one developer. But if that development, if the traffic impact of the new development for significant <coughs> problems, then that's on them. Correct, but they're, they're a project that's going to trigger, how many units is this project again? 24. 24. 24 times what? Times 7, what's that? Some engineer help me here? 168 or something like that. Yeah, So he's not even close to triggering uh, per state, for the state anyway, a traffic study. And I think that most engineer would argue that that is not a significant, is, is this, it's not a, it's, I mean, I, I'm not saying it doesn't have, uh, what, what has an impact is all these things right. that what I call background, it just keeps adding up and adding up and adding up and when do you eventually do something about it? But it's still not their problem because it's a, it's a compounding, effect over time I guess just so when do you put your foot you, or I like to set my sandal down and say okay it's your turn to pay for a million dollar of we would mitigation just like to, to have that that clarification that they demonstrate that their impact is not going to compound um, other problems whether they're going to be accountable for it or not we just need that analysis because I you can tell that to me oh boy I'm having some mess here <laughs> holy <laughs> smoke I'd, I'd like to read that <laughs> okay so we definitely, I think that's clear. The, 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 the comment is clear. I think you want um, stormwater and traffic to be talked about. Um, right, and you as a city can tell us about the yep. traffic flow. We don't have to blame Maybe them. I can write a report about what we are doing yeah. right now to uh, improve, A, the situation at the light. The situation at the light right now, um, 
some of the movement, the wait time is how many seconds? 300 and do you remember? The lower line? Yeah. yeah. 300 seconds and by changing the timing plan we're gonna go to we're gonna cut that in half so you're gonna see traffic moving better like on Friday night heading you, north you're also gonna have Jackson Lab coming into correct and you're also in what they were talking about the project that they're building on top of the hill behind Rennie's if they're gonna do good they're, they're gonna build behind Shaw's so that's gonna be more traffic correct. I mean and I'm not blaming you know, it's, it's not the applicant's problem, it's the city's problem. Well, okay. what I will definitely send you a report because we're doing things yeah. that are extremely interesting and that uh, is going to hopefully change traffic for the best. Um, and especially at the lower light uh, and uh, especially on Friday nights in the summer, for example. It's not going to solve everything, but we definitely are looking at, I mean, the manager is uh, has a great interest in keeping mobility because when you're all jammed up, you're not going to help yourself in right. development. So. John, keep go in mind ahead. <laughs> just keep in mind, and I'm not saying this project's going to add to significantly to the traffic misery in that area. <laughs> misery. Well, I mean, keep in mind, though, I mean, you talk about the cumulative effect, and on the 208 High Street project, apparently the effect was, was bad enough that you squeezed $2,500 out of the developer. Now, in the grand scheme of things, he wasn't adding a significant number of trips to the area, but yet that developer was responsible for, for coming up with some money. But the money is going to be used, and what happens is that you're changing, to, to, to update the, 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 um, the timing plan at that signal, because right now we're using a timing plan that's 10 years old. Well, no sense hashing over that, because I mean, my my idea was that the, the the city failed miserably in that regard. For the timing plan. Yes, that they didn't keep it up to date and absolutely. functioning. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Those timing plans needs to you can't function with. It's not in your best interest to function with old timing plans. But what also happened. I think that's in, in, in defense of the city, if, if that's the right word, is that we were an urban compact area per the census. We fell out of the urban compact area, so the DOT took control, and then it was all their responsibility. With the 2010 census, which the information comes out two or three years later, we came back in the urban compact area, and then development was not that great. So it, like really, it wasn't much of significance and then it started picking up and it basically hit us um, hard. Any, any further questions for the applicant? Does the applicant have any further quest any questions for us? I'm sorry. Okay. In that case, thank you very much and we can continue I assume there are no mylons. So could you make a decision on the site visit in between oh, the two right. meetings, please? Yes. Can we, do you have an agenda? What's, um, does the applicant know when they'll be back for the preliminary? Excuse me? Does, does the applicant know when they'll be back for the preliminary? Next month, I hope. Okay. So anytime after <coughs> So what I would do is I would we would coordinate with you and we would probably advertise the agenda in the site visit at the same time and make sure it works for the applicant and everybody. Mm -hmm. So it would be uh, the meeting and then promptly after it would be a site visit. Maybe the next day or you know. And you'll have the stormwater report ready. They should have their stormwater information. Yes. That would be fine. We talk to the city for traffic flow or whatever. We will um, give you a, uh, I think I'm going to do a report on what we've been doing. And I think that hopefully it's going to um, um, show that we have, um, in the last year, have done an incredible amount of progress on that and taking this extremely seriously and investing some funds as well. So. There'll be further TRT meetings before next meeting, correct? 
before the preliminary. There's a TRT, yes. There's a, an official TRT meeting before every single time an, an applicant comes to the planning board. I would hope that they would discuss, especially the chief, Mosier would, and the fire department would look at traffic circulation in that area. I mean, internally or externally to the site? Ex externally. Noted. And did the, the fire house, the fire department feel at this point about the access? Um, we've actually met with CES and the developer mm -hmm. uh, on May 30th, and um, actually um, through information gathering as far as fire department apparatus and um, particular measurements. Uh, radius requirements um, the, they've given us a acceptable turning template within the actually the internal movement um, that allows for our two biggest trucks to be able to drive in and back around to be able to get to be able to maneuver comfortably um, within within the um, confines of the parking area the buildings etc cetera, etc cetera. so like I say we we've met and discussed this very at much at length with the developer and um, the representative from CES so we're and pretty you noticed a comment uh, mention of water pressure for the sprinkler system yeah we we've I we, we've actually let the developer know that he needs to get a water test done up there I'm, I'm gonna say that um, uh, that probably there isn't gonna be an issue um, the housing project that's going in right now um, has found that they've got more than enough volume and pressure to supply the sprinkler system for that project. I don't see an issue with this and it's even downhill from that location. So, But he still does need to get that done prior to getting the sprinkler system designed and stuff like that. So uh, we hope that um, if a fire breaks out, it's not all projects at once. That's correct. <laughs> And Mike, I would like uh, maybe the next meeting or at some time to have hear some discussion from you as to how the fire department would handle, let's say, a, a catastrophic fire that one or both buildings are totally engulfed. Mm -hmm. uh, now obviously, I'm, I'm guessing you wouldn't put a fire truck right next to the that is correct burning building. So I mean, with numerous fire trucks, I mean how. How would you handle something like that? Well, we it doesn't have to be right now. Yeah, we you know we've talked with the developer and actually um, because of the travel distance of hydrants and whatever, uh, we've discussed the hydrant going at the entrance to give us a water supply there to make it a little bit more feasible, um, and hooking into that fire department connection for the sprinkler system um, would be our main goal. Um, and then being able to get another truck around there. I think the le reach of the ladder truck is appropriate. I mean, we can get to that if we need to. Getting all the way around the building, I know the chief has said he's, that thing is going pretty well. We're not gonna be putting a, build, a truck around the back side of that building. Um, uh, but we will do what we can to get to that building the best we can. The entrances are accessible to, ac accessible to us. Um, and um, you know, so I think I think we could deal with that pretty well. We can get to the roof with a ladder truck, um, and um, so we're going to be. You know, we've we've got the conceptual drawings for for the design. Um, I haven't had a chance to review them yet, um, but we'll be doing that to determine access inside the building. Uh, as well as egress of the indi individuals in the building and what would be the minimum requirements for that travel distance, common path of travel, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So our biggest concern is getting people out of that building when it, if something's going on. So. I believe Michelle had asked if we were going to do a site visit. We just put it to a vote. Or We wish a formal vote, or are we satisfied that Michelle will take care of scheduling it? So, yes. Okay, so everybody mm -hmm. wants a side visit? It's yep. kind of like a, a, mm -hmm. a consensus. Okay. 
and if you don't show up, there will be retaliation. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yeah, we'll dock your pay. <coughs> Just cut it in half. Yeah. <laughs> Drastic measure, but. Okay, uh, there are no mylars. Yes, that's there true. Really is no but there is no public. public. <laughs> Shall I say for the record, there is no public to comment? <laughs> Is there a motion to adjourn? I make a motion that we adjourn this fabulous meeting. Is there a second? Okay. All in favor of adjournment. Thank you. We are adjourned. You can get on.